The Sims is quite possibly one of the most evil games of all time. People sink years of their life and hundreds of dollars into making sure these fake people are as happy as they should be making themselves. You work a job for 40 hours a week and then you die. It's a sucker's game, but you're smarter than that because you came to me. You're here for advice on how to rake in the simoleons and never have to worry about anything ever again. I had some people complain in my last video that I didn't actually give them any helpful advice. And yeah, I might have gotten a little bit sidetracked, but I promise that won't happen in this video. Instead, I'm gonna present you with the information in the most boring and unfunny way possible. Because I respect the integrity between the YouTube content creator and the internet video telling people how to make money in a video game that came out three years ago. Let's get started. Make your character, call her Jessica Fletcher, or some shit. Start writing. Write your book. Call it Harry Potter 8, The Chamber of Even More Secrets. 51 Shades of Grey. Publish it. Make a million dollars. Men will want you. Women will want to be you. You ever see George R.R. R. Martin? The man's swimming in bitches. Take your money to the bank. I'm sorry, sir. We don't have room for all your royalty money. Ah, shit. Ah, fuck. Fuck it. Buy the bank. Books are ridiculously easy to publish in The Sims, so you can probably publish a modest 3,000 before the Grim Reaper comes to collect. Did you know Angela Lansbury is still alive? Fucking crazy. Thank Thanks for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button and smash that subscribe button and smash the bell and smash the comment section and smash the recommended videos playlist. Now you can live your life and die knowing you've lived your life in as boring and uninteresting a way as possible. Or if you think you can handle it, you can come with me and make some real fucking money. The first thing we want to do is make our character. We're just going to adjust this and this here. And for a name, let's go with Maximilian Underbite a proud member of the House of Underbite, a cadet branch of the Habsburg line, but with even more inbreeding. Now, Max is relatively poor. Now, we're not gonna build anything. Instead, we're going to immediately move houses. Jessica Fletcher needs a roommate. She's lonely. Here I am with my new roommate, Miss Fletcher. Now, between us, we have a fair amount of money, but if she were to have an accident, I wouldn't have to share it. In order to induce that accident, we're gonna need a pool. Pools are complete death traps. It's best you find that out now. Backyard swimming pools kill more people every year than vending machine attacks. Get in the pool, Jess. And now we're gonna brick it up like it's the cask of Amontillado. I was gonna say I feel kind of bad. I like Jessica Fletcher and Murder, she wrote, and Angela Lansbury. And I was thinking maybe I should let her live. But then I saw something that changed my mind and erased all doubt. She peed in the pool. I'm sorry, but if you pee in the pool, like, maybe you deserve this. And there we have it. She's having a nice swim, isn't she? The Grim Reaper shows up to dispose of the evidence. And just like that, everything belongs to Maximilian Underbite. But you see, that's not all. With her gone, we can sell all of her stuff, including the walls. But now you might notice that we don't have a place to live. Who can we mooch off of? It looks like the BFF household has an opening for a new BFF. We're just gonna head right over there and move in. But Max Underbite doesn't really wanna share a house with anyone. So we're gonna just real quick build a pool and now we're gonna take a swim and now seal them inside forever. Oh, look at that. Travis Scott has identified a new type of fish. You're in a pool, mate. Oh, well, I'm sorry you won't be able to share your discovery of the miraculously occurring pool fish. Max is feeling lonely. I know, we can move in with someone else. How about the Pancake family? They seem like they need some underbite in their lives. Merge households. I think you might know where this is going. Eliza and Bob Pancakes. How about as a housewarming gift, a swimming pool? And trapped forever. Uh-oh, Bob's boss is calling because he missed work. Well, don't fret, Bob. You won't have to worry about that much longer. And they're having a great time, a great time, and dead. And the Grim Reaper shows up to clean up the evidence. So now I have access to all their stuff, and I think you know what happens next. Except there's someone at the door. Apparently Bob's boss was Joey Figaro, son of Fat Tony Figaro of the Fat Figaro crime family. And I just took out one of his business interests. I swear to God, I had no idea Bobby Pancakes was in Joey Figaro's crew. In my defense, what kind of a mob name is Pancakes? Fortunately for me, Joey is a pretty understanding guy and he was able to arrange a sit down for me with his father. Fat Tony and I have struck a deal. He's willing to overlook my transgressions if I build him a pool. Not at his house, God no. I need to build a pool at Kareem Madrid's house. Mr. Madrid is an up-and-coming deviant. He was just released from a long stint at Sing Sing, and he's recently started putting out hits on my associates. Fat Tony thought it would be a good idea to welcome him home with a brand new pool. Thanks for taking care of that one for me, Grim Reaper. I made a lot of money, and I've come to see Fat Tony as a father to me, but I promise that's the last hit I do for the mob. I have another job for you. They had all kinds of jobs lined up for me, most of them pool related. Maxi, I want you to call a friend of mine. I think you could use your help. Hello, Max? This is Himmy Jaffa. I hear you build pools. That's correct, sir. 
I was hoping you could build some pools for me. I, I, I could build pools for you, sir. After I started working for Jaffa, we got close. He became a dear family friend. He also became close with my daughter, Peggy. Him, he helped people. He was the head of the biggest union in the world. What? And he didn't live with the Grim Reaper for a month when the rent was thin. Listen, Maxie, you're like a son to me. More than my actual son, Joey. We have a problem with Jaffa. He's not kicking money back to us anymore. If you can't convince him to change his tune, we might have to build a pool for him and fill it in. Henny, listen to me. Tony told me to tell you it's what it is. They wouldn't dare. Don't say, don't say, don't say they wouldn't they dare. They wouldn't dare. Don't say they wouldn't dare. They wouldn't dare. Don't say they wouldn't dare. This went on for a while, but then the word came down from Fat Tony. Himmy Jaffa had to go. We told Himmy it was a sit down between him and Fat Tony to clear the air. Before he could figure it out, it was already too late. Again, I cannot recommend the Grim Reaper enough. He's like the most dedicated guy on Fiverr. After Himmy Jaffa disappeared, my daughter Peggy never talked to me again. It destroyed me. I have another daughter and she still loves me. But compared to Peggy, she's garbage. But now I'm an old man, all alone in a gigantic mansion with nothing left to live for. I guess there's only one thing left to do. And that's to leave a like and smash that subscribe. Did you like the video? Why not leave a like? Did you dislike the video? You can still leave a like. Why not? Why not subscribe? If you haven't seen The Irishman, I'm sorry that you didn't get any of the references.